Good day, children. Today we are talking about cloning, specifically about Dolly the sheep, the first mammal ever successfully cloned. The year is 1996. The Spice Girls are just breaking on the pop music scene. Yo, I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want, so tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I want a clone of a sheep. So we got Dolly. This is Dolly. Say hello to Dolly. She's dead. Died in 2003 at the age of six from basically lung cancer. This is Dolly's mum, name unknown. In fact, Dolly had three mums, which is quite interesting, I think. Can you conceive, if you'll excuse my play on words, how it is that Dolly might have had three mothers? Well, I'll tell you, but first let's have a look at how Dolly was made. In this case, a daddy sheep and a mommy sheep did not love each other very much. Rather, Professors Keith Campbell and Ian Wilmot loved science so much, they successfully managed to impregnate Dolly's mother without a single sperm cell through a method called somatic cell nuclear transfer, or SCINT. Now, as you can probably tell by their names, Keith and Ian were Scottish, and our tale therefore unfolds in the hamlet of Easter Bush in Midlothian County, Scotland. It is early January 1996, and Keith and Ian have extracted cells from the mammary glands of a Finn Dorset sheep, name unknown, henceforth mother number one. Why they specifically chose booby cells for this is not entirely clear to me, as any somatic cell could theoretically work for the skint. But I'm not objecting, merely noting. In fact, Dolly the sheep was named after Dolly Parton, in a humoristical nod to the fact that the sheep was cloned from breast cells, and the famous singer is known for her ample bosom. And this is not an urban myth, oh no. It was confirmed by Ian in a 1997 interview. I don't think we'll get away with such humour today, alas. How things have changed since then. So what you do is you extract the booby cell and set it aside in a low nutrient culture medium. This part of the process was discovered accidentally, but it turns out you need to starve the cell a little in order to get it to replicate itself properly later on. With the cell chilling in the culture, you get another sheep, we'll call this one mother number two, and you take an egg from her. With a micropipette, we vacuum out the nucleus. This is somewhat like making meringue. We only want the egg white. Now, I should point out that this sheep does look different to mother number one. Here we are using Finn Dorset. This is Scottish blackface. Now, retrieve the slightly starved booby cell. What we're going to do now is put the enucleated egg in contact with the cell, which still contains a nucleus with a full gene sequence inside, the DNA of mother number one. Now get out the electrodes, because I kid you not, we're going to shock this concoction like we're frickin' Frankenstein himself. The electricity does things to the membranes, facilitating the fusion of the cells. The electrical impulses also mimic the release of calcium that takes place during natural fertilization that kicks off mitosis, aka cell division, in such a way that the egg divides as if it had been fertilized by a sperm. Now, we let the mixture rest for a bit before we put it in the oven. The oven being mother number three. In this case, we are using more of the Scottish blackface, although you can substitute Finn Dorset if you haven't any blackface at hand. You pop your embryo into mother number three for 145 to 150 days, and with a bit of luck, you'll have a clone of mother number one. And that's how to clone a sheep. Pretty neat. Pretty cool, I'd say. However, much like making a souffle, cloning is notorious for flopping, since it requires a very delicate balance of ingredients, timing, and just the right amount of electricity. It took 276 failed attempts before Dolly came out alive, but let's not think about that. Let's look at some other notable examples of clones to have come into existence over the last couple of decades. It is the distant future, the year 2000. In the year 2000, the first pussycat was cloned. Her name was Rainbow. Here she is. A few years later, in 2004, she was cloned again. But you could have fooled me. Apparently, coat patterns are somewhat random, so that's why their colouring differs. But, I mean, look at this face. How are these two clones? I don't know, but let's trust the science. In 2005, the first doggo was cloned. 
this beautiful Afghan hound was named Snuppy. And of all the countries in the world, fate ordained that the first dog to be cloned would be in South Korea. They didn't eat him, though. Since the early 2000s, pet cloning has been a thing. Viagen Pets and Equine, for example, have 4.3 stars on Google. Nice. Famously, Barbara Streisand revealed in a 2018 interview with Variety that she had had her late Couton de Tullier, Samantha, cloned. Twice. And speaking of Barbara Streisand, in 1969, she sang a little song that went something like... Good day, Dolly, you are dead. By golly, it's so nice to pay you tribute in the song. Your life was swell, Dolly, I could tell. Dolly, you were so and you were growing in old Edinburgh. So romantic cell nuclear transfer. That old thing, Peter the Rafter, Joe, they cracked it, even hacked it, open Pandora. Take a pap, fellas, find an empty lab, fellas, darling, I'll never go away again. 